Welcome, Aries singles, totally singles, completely singles. This is the Urban Jungle Studios. Um, <laughs> Dave's Sky Tarot, we use Neo Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot deck today. Do the singles reading, meet the soulmate, I call it. It's an always positive reading because I'm simply asking the question, who is the right one for you? Um, and I use eight cards and two cards for emotional area, two cards for the intellectual area, two cards for the sexual and love area of life, and two cards for the what I call core values and lifestyle area of life. And it's uh, like the four pillars of a relationship. Um, I also think of this as the four pillars read. So, but it's really about meeting your soulmate, um, just asking spirit to reveal what they're like. Uh, what I usually get is going to be personality, uh, psychology, uh, personal history, maybe get some stories, get an idea um, uh, what they might uh, do for a like, uh, for a living. Um, I'll pick up a lot on their astrology, so keep an ear out for that. And think of this as Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus as we go along uh, in terms of uh, for yourself, too. So we're starting in the emotional section with the Page of Swords coming in at the top. And that's going to be over the nine of pentacles remember this uh, if you see the three of swords no one's breaking up with you it's um just uh going to describe an aspect of their personality and behavior king of cups now i've been watching it's my favorite card of the ethereal visions deck here um doesn't that look like jim morrison from the doors i swear to god it kills me and a little bit it's got a little bit of the dude energy too with the robe and the that's a white Russian in that cup, you know, could be the dude, Jeff Bridges, but more about, more looks like Morrison, and you talk about laid back, Jesus Christ, man, got the robe, that's like a, the king's at like a party, you know, uh, like a intimate party or something, right, um, and he's got the fish hanging there, so it brings in the Pisces energy too, um, And here I see the sun, so clearly we have Pisces sun, and this, this is the intellectual position. So we have the King of Cups over the Knight of Pentacles. So and, uh, I feel like, and the Knight of Pentacles is looking back at the emotional area here, uh, at the Nine of Pentacles. And I do read kind of the conscious at top, unconscious at the bottom, the energy. Um, and over here in the emotional area, I will see the uh, moon. But we have the Pisces energy here coming in strong for the sun. And the Nine of Pentacles is a very strong energy. I, I got this for them. Um, I'm thinking about their moon now. But they would have had an only uh, parent. They would probably have been raised by primarily a single parent. Um, and I believe that they had a pretty good childhood. They had a single parent, but they're a single parent that was uh, emotionally whole, emotionally available, uh, mostly intelligent. Um, it, but the Nine of Pentacles, someone that was uh, self-contained, a happy bachelor, capable of taking care of themselves, someone who probably didn't have a lot of need uh, for some, uh, you know, another person like some of us do. I do, I mean, I admit it. Some people are not relationship oriented. Um, I really got a strong sense their uh, parent uh, may have been a Capricorn dominant, the Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus personality, um, and operated kind of in that way. But they were very solid and very there for them. Um, in Pisces here, I feel like they have an Aquarius uh, moon. It served quite well it, with this relationship they have with their parent and you know it's probably a mom probably a woman it might not be I mean there are guys that raise kids you know um, so then it would definitely be that um, and um, but I think they would have a really good relationship with them and I think like their parent was fairly young when they had them and so even now like their parents probably fairly young um, I think your person here, I'm not saying they're young, but I think their parents are around. 
Um, and I think that they would have that kind of relationship, which not everyone does. So one story might say, you might find out, I don't see this as being bad, this is your person. I'm not saying they're perfect, um, but they're the right one for you. That's all we're asking, you know. who's there's, I think there's a lot of soulmates that quiver. And we're like, what's the best, load up the next, the one that's best uh, spirit as a soulmate here for your soul's purpose. And here they come. And I got to love this King of Cups energy with their son. They're going to be so fucking cool. And I think they're going to be physically attractive, like just kind of hot, just sexy. This is a Pisces. It's going to be sexy, you know. Um, and um, you think about a Pisces being so sensitive. And now Aquarius Moon, notoriously, not saying Aquarius Moons are insensitive, um, but emotionally uh, stable, logical, very hard to emotionally overwhelm, uh, you know, an Aquarius moon person, you know, um, all things being equal. All right. So in terms of their minds, they have a really strong connection with their own unconscious mind. I'm not sure if they will tell you that. They might actually they may have a semi sextile 30 degree relationship between their moon and their sun if you look at their natal chart too or you know, within a close orb on that one uh, um, this uh, you might see that Pisces Aquarius, Capricorn. Let me look at their sexual nature here and their love nature. Queen of Cups, you can see the Venus energy there. I think we got ourselves a Pisces Venus and a Ten of Wands and an Aries Mars. So right now for astrology, we're looking at the Aquarius Moon, Pisces Sun, Pisces, Venus, and we might have a semi-sextile 30 degree relationship with this sun and moon. I got a feeling. Um, that's a weird aspect that you got to uh, dig for. You know, usually you talk to people, you figure it out. Um, it's, it's some kind of little quirk about them that, you know, um, it's just part, they probably wouldn't even notice this part of your nature. Good friend or something. If you ask their good friend, if you can do this, make an exercise get back to me and tell me when you get with this person okay like uh, you know ask the best friend like what's the quirkiest thing about them and they'll probably immediately say oh well it, and that's probably what that semi sextile is about just saying it's an astrologer so you know Pisces exalted um, here in uh, with the Venus um, the ten of wands the Mars uh, here um, this just shows me that they really pour it on here in terms of love, you know. Um, this, I say it's your person. I don't know, I didn't say they were a virgin. <laughs> um, but I think this is someone that really enjoys sex. Um, they're, the way they love is uh, very unconditional, too. Um, I'm a Venus in Scorpio. It can be a little intimidating. Um, now it is exalted there. My Venus is, is detriment, so I was always aware that these were my issues, you know, um, because you know uh, they don't love you specifically so much more than they love everyone else uh, that they love. You know what I mean? Like a Venus and Scorpio, our love interest, they're like up here. Everybody else gets, gets second tier, and uh, this is uh, totally the opposite way. They love the hell out of you. They're amazing the way they can love. Um, but they're going to love the hell out of everyone, you know. Um, with this too, um, I just feel like it would probably bring them into uh, many relationships. And um, they're going to be, get ready, because they're going to be someone like, in terms of sex, they're going to be fiery. This Aries, Mars, uh, God help you, it's in the eighth house. <laughs> um, but... It's just going to be uh, so strong, I think. So the way they're going to make love is going to definitely be like that, a very passionate, fiery way. Like you go in the bedroom before you can close the door, your clothes are off and you're pregnant, you know, before you can even hit the bed, that kind of energy. 
um, which might be a little odd because they might again with this king of cups you know look just look at how laid back that that dude is right but then on the other hand you kind of look at that dude you know like yeah he probably could get it on the other female you know that's the same here. you know look they look like they they can let their hair down right they don't they they can have fun you got to have the feel it like of all the kings this king that Jim Morrison, King of Cups, he's got to be the most laid-back king. Got to give me that. Yeah. Now, wow, this is kind of heavy here. This is in their lifestyle and core values, the chariot. What the heck do they do, guys? And the Knight of Swords. I always call this the coming at you sword. Coming at you. It looks like he's coming right at you. Wow. So I get for them, entrepreneur, I, I should have said they have a very good mind with the King of Cups and the Knight of Pentacles. They have this uh, very good relationship with their unconscious mind. They may have very, a eidetic recall with their memory, if not very good memory. Um, this someone, I'm trying to think like what their um, Mercury would be. And I got to think Aquarius because I just think it's really good. Um, and it might be in... Um, if um, they have this Aquarius moon, they could have the Mercury on the moon there. Um, and so this is someone, you see this again with the Knight of Swords down here. So when you're dealing with them and you're talking to them, I mean, they're fast. They're fast. Pacey, they're not fast like busting you out. But you see that their mind works very fast. And you're just going to have, you're going to come away with the impression like this person is really smart. And they don't talk a lot, they're laid back, they're listening, they're taking, but like when they do talk, it's going to be like really obvious that this person has a great mind. Um, and they very well could have advanced degrees or I don't know, uh, anything that really, they, their mind is capable basically of accomplishing whatever it is that they want to accomplish. Um, and I absolutely love this Knight of Pentacles looking right at that nine pentacles right there there's just something about them that's very solid you know um energy and and they they must know it they um you know they may have practices that they do like meditation or something because they know that's that knight of pentacles again with the aquarius i just as an astrologer one of the things i picked up on kind of early was gosh you know Seems like whenever people have that uh, Mercury in Aquarius, they're really smart. <laughs> yeah, it kind of was. Uh, notice it. You know, you would think like with Virgo or something, of course, they're going to be smart. But but Aquarius, man, um, they could get on it. And I really see that here in what they do. And now they have the Chariot for Lifestyle and Core Values over the Knight of Swords. So the Chariot is really taking action. Um, this is someone who may have moved many times. Um, they may have started in many companies, uh, made many efforts. Um, they have a vision about something very powerful here. Uh, they communicate, they tell you about this. Um, it's something too with the chariot about their alignment of their higher self. Um, there's a spirituality about this person. Uh, maybe that Pisces energy is coming out. Um, so in terms of what they do, um, it would be something, whatever it is, it's something that they really feel driven to do. That's the energy of this to me, driven. It's like, I have to do this. And if you ask why, they'll just say, I don't know, I just have to do it. I know it's my soul's work to do this work and they're absolutely going to do it. So in terms of work, um, I'm not saying they're workaholics, but you know their work would be a part of your lives together because it's a part. They, whatever it is they do, they're not doing it because they gotta have the money. I think they're fine along those lines. They're doing it because they feel like they gotta do it. It's it's their life's work, and they they probably very they might be a writer too. Comes to mind. They very much could tell you. They'll tell you. Just ask them what it is. It's it's maybe that's their life work is to tell you what it is. Ta -da. So, thank you guys. Um, Aries, always Mondays. I'm a little day late for this one, so sorry. <laughs> Supposed to be, but uh, if you haven't checked out the Soul Family Read, guys, I put a link here with this, and it's on my channel. 
daily collective read for spirituality manifestation more and let me know what you think of this the predictive reads the person may not be in your life just yet this is the end of november and let me know if you run into them get back to me thank you guys